You didn't ask me my crazy question of if it was possible to have a giant worm. Is it possible? So worms are invertebrates. So that means they don't have a skeletal system or a backbone. And something without a skeletal system, I can't imagine jumping on that and trying to ride it um, because it has nothing to support it, right? And this is one of the things that's kind of crazy about the sandworm in Dune, right? It's a great fictional story in that regard. However, it's feasibly not possible right, by what we know about how animals move and have what animals need to move. So the sandworm in Dune is a fictitious character. It's based off a lot of the things you see in your standard living worm, but that large of a worm could not exist. The largest worm that I'm aware of is, I think it's about 100 feet, so that would be about 30 meters. It is not the equivalent of the giant four football length size worm. Uh, that's the sandworm in Dune. Worms are invertebrates, so they don't have a skeletal system. So without that skeletal system, how would this large worm actually move? Many people may not know is worms don't have lungs. So they breathe by absorbing oxygen through their outside, through their skin or cuticle. That's possible for that worm to survive because it's so small. The oxygen can come in and then get to every tissue it needs to get to. But now if you have this giant worm, right, that's so wide around and it has no lungs to breathe, how is it actually gonna get the oxygen in and all the way inside of it to reach all the tissues it needs to? Now it is a fictional story. So technically maybe these sandworms developed and evolved lungs that they have that other worms on earth don't have. But the lack of lungs, the lack of a skeletal system, these are two major things that would really prevent this large of a worm from existing in reality. Worms are really unique because first, they don't have limbs or legs, right? They are tube-like structures. So they typically move through a combination of their muscles that are helping them to kind of crawl or slither or move in a sinusoidal pattern across the ground or in the water if they're found in the water. So there are some worms that exist in the desert. They are going to be under the ground in the soil where it's going to be as moist as possible. Again, worms need to stay moist and hydrated. So if they're out on top of the desert, they will dehydrate really quickly. And then in that soil, they're gonna be eating some of that either decayed plant matter that's down there or bacteria or fungi. So yes, some worms do have teeth. There is a variety of worms that's called specifically Pristianchus pacificus. And this worm develops a tooth-like structure in some forms. So this worm is actually really cool because it has two morphs or two forms. The one form has a mouth that's wide and would just eat bacteria. And the other form has a mouth that ends up having one predatory tooth and that tooth can actually be used in order to attach to another worm, and they will actually eat another worm using that tooth-like structure. So teeth are found in worms, but not in all of your worms, and especially not in your earthworms that are gonna be crawling around on the ground. So the worm in Dune secretes spice, right? And they use this spice in the movie in order to have longevity and also for interstellar transport. There are worms that do secrete things, but they secrete things for other worms, okay? So some nematodes can secrete pheromones. And those pheromones can be cues used to attract mates. So you can think of a worm, this worm pheromone as like a love potion that the worm is using to bring another worm towards it. Other worm pheromones or things that they secrete can tell the worms around them that there's so many of us here right now and we need to enter this alternative life cycle or this dower stage so that we don't just die right now. And that's a worm's way of protecting itself because if there's tons of other worms around, there's not gonna be enough food for all of them. And so it might lead to some of them succumbing. But if they can enter this dower stage and then be reanimated when there's food back again, they have a chance of surviving. I think that any organism you can take that exists out there that people have seen and they've seen on their own, if you can multiply that in size and scope 
to something that could be intimidating and scary, I think anybody in Hollywood or sci-fi can take advantage of that. You see that in the case not only with the worms, right? But you see that in movies like Godzilla and those sort of things where you've taken something everybody knows and just magnify it to this scale. <laughs>